Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast. We're the Commander Clash crew. Me, Seth, Krim, and Richard all join together to talk about Commander-related topics. And today, we are going to be discussing something uh, that we're pining for, each of us collectively. These are a bunch of very sweet creatures that we wish were legendary so we could have them as commanders. So these are our top four or five or whatever, however many we're going to get through in about an hour-ish. Uh, cards that we wish were commanders. And we're focusing on creatures this time because if we went to like enchantments and, and all this other stuff, it could get pretty wild. So we're going to stick with creatures for now and maybe we'll revisit this topic later and expand it to other, other legendary uh, card types as well. Um, so let's kick it off with uh, Richard. What is a what is a commander that you always wish you could have built around but can't because it's not not legendary? All right, uh, we're gonna start with a spicy one, I guess. Uh, Stormcrow. <laughs> uh, Stormcrow's a two man or one two flying, but you all knew that because Stormcrow is like one of the most famous magic cards of all time, right? Like, what what is a legendary creature? A creature. That has like risen up from the masses, has separated itself from like all the generic creatures. So I actually feel like once a creature hits a certain level of popularity and infamy, it should be eligible for your commander. So Stormcrow is the poster child, but things like Stoneforge, Mystic, Tarmogoyf, like, you know, everyone knows these cards. I don't know what this random uncommon commander is from the latest set. Right, but I do know Stormcrow. So why can I not use Stormcrow as my commander? I, I feel <laughs> you you are a god at this point. You should be <laughs> a commander. It's it's like you ever you ever see those comedians who like talk about like not going to college or anything and then they're like, Oh, but I got an honorary doctorate. Like this college just <laughs> gave me an honorary doctorate. So technically I'm a doctor, but I never actually went to college at all. I think that's what we're what we're talking about basically. We need honorary legendary status for <laughs> For iconic, I I guess I could get behind that. <laughs> but why would you want Stormcrow in your command zone, though? That's another question. It's, it's it's a bird. It's the best bird bird commander. Look, if I needed to sum up the bird tribe in a nutshell, Stormcrow. <laughs> right. Unfortunately, it doesn't have all the colors. We need basically like three color uh, Stormcrow. But yeah, I I think. Like, okay, maybe, okay, Stormcrow may be too far, but what about, like, a Tarmogoy? What about a Stoneforge Mystic? Like, what about like, these iconic cards that you can't put up? And I'd take a Tarmogoy over any random legendary, right? Like, the infamy of this card, the embodiment of magic history, right? Like, it's, it's the essence of the format, I would argue, that these cards be eligible to, to command your deck. So Is Stoneforge like not me. too strong? Out of the legendary <laughs> spot, that would be actually okay. okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe Stoneforge is auto banned. I don't know. Maybe yeah. we have to balance it like Golos, <laughs> but like these should be eligible. Wait, would it be too strong in twenty twenty one Magic? I feel like after we've seen uh, like Tovalar and stuff, I don't know if Stoneforge is uh. uh well, <laughs> Tovalar is isn't two mana, and doesn't have right. Like Tovalar is like four, right? No, he's three, but he does he's like three. a bajillion things. <laughs> Does a imagine snap still gotta be mono deck. white. Yeah, okay, it's okay. Not to be mono white, that's true. Saram or Stoneforge, which would be which would be the better Stoneforge. like equipment commander? Stoneforge. Stoneforge. Not even close. Think so? Ram. Yeah. yeah. Really. Stoneforge. Two man. Yeah, I say Saram. <laughs> well, then it would two... probably, if it's significantly better than Saram, it's probably very, very, very well, good. Well, would you consider like pure steel paladin uh, legendary status? Because in pure steel paladin would wipe the floor out of both of them, right? The Strom that that also lets you equip yeah, things for free. Maybe you need to. I mean, we we have strong commanders. You know, you have, you know, you have I, your Edgar Markovs and your Goloses and whatever, right? Maybe they need to be pre banned. I don't know, right? But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I agree with Richard. Hmm? I don't know if I agree with Richard's specific examples, but I can't see where he's coming from. Like. It would be sweet if you could play Shiv and Dragon as your commander, like Sarah Angel. Some of these iconic creatures that were printed in the era when there was like two legends per block instead of 40 legends per set. Like, you know, if they are being printed today, some of those cool old cards would be commanders. So uh, even though I don't know about like Stoneforge in specific, I could see how this rule could benefit the format. Well, uh, we'll move on to your pick then, Seth. 
Uh, what 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 creature would you like to build as a commander? Oh, uh, there were there were actually a lot, but the one that I want most of all, and it is really a travesty that this card is not legendary. Questing Feldegriff. Feldegriff is one of the most unique commanders. I guess I should read the card. Questing Feldegriff, if you know actual Feldegriff, it's another version of it that was printed a few years later. It's a Bant commander. It's a four mana, four, four Feldegriff. You can pay a green to give it plus one, plus one until end of turn and give your an opponent a one, one hippo token. You can pay white to give it protection from black and red until end of turn and have an opponent gain two life. Or you can give it blue to give it a uh, pay a blue to give it flying and an opponent gets to draw a card. So it's essentially a, a updated version of Feldegriff. And one of my all time favorite games of Commander Clash we ever played was the week when we all played Feldegriff. That was just so much fun, and I would love to be able to revisit that with a bit of a twist with Questing Feldegriff. So this feels like a creature to me. If it was printed today, it would a million percent be legendary. There's no way. But it was printed 20 years ago when they didn't print Legends as often, so it missed out. And I think it would be a really fun commander. I know Feldegriff is kind of like a mean <laughs> group hug commander, and I think that Questing Feldegriff certainly wouldn't be overpowered. It would fall in that same kind of range as Feldegriff, I think. It's probably actually worse than actual Feldegriff, but I think it'd be fun to build around because it's just such unique. There's not many legends that do what the Feldegriffs do, as in uh, giving you a benefit, but also having you give your opponent something if you want to take advantage of that. So I would love to see this card be legendary. So I was looking at the two cards. I'm going to have, uh, I mean, so I'm looking at the two cards, uh, Questing Feldegriff versus the original Feldegriff. Original Feldegriff was legendary, uh, and almost they're almost exactly the same. Almost exactly the same in terms of their abilities. Um, the Questing Feldegriff has slightly different upsides, but the same downside is still there. Like, if you activate it for one green, uh, Original Feldegriff gives Trample. This one gives plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, but you still give a, a, a Hippo token to your opponent, which is absolutely hilarious. That's the um, best part. <laughs> it definitely wouldn't be overpowered. And I think it's slightly better just if you have make make infinite and infinitely pump this Feldegriff instead of like giving it infinite trample. Trample. But like it's it, there's no way it would be overpowered at all. And it is a very cute commander. And it wouldn't be reserve list too, which would be nice as well. Yeah, th this is definitely fine, like balance wise <laughs> and everything too. So <laughs> why why did it lose its Legendary status. Is it like the era where Wizards was like, we're not making legendaries anymore, so they just printed cards not legend. Like, if it was originally legendary, why is it not well, legendary original, after? Originally, legends, legendary was a drawback, right? Like, you didn't have an upside to have legendary as a thing. It would be like a way to, like, as a power knob thing, like, all right, this card is a little bit stronger, but it's legendary, so it's fine. Was Feldegriff ever good for constructed play <laughs> that they felt <laughs> who knows maybe they were afraid so. of it alone. original Feldegriff was like alliances or something what was the original yeah, alliances yeah and then uh plane shift was uh questing Feldegriff hmm. yeah I don't Wait, know I just I just noticed the type is Feldegriff how many Feldegriffs do we have yeah that's not Ooh. like a the only, <laughs> the it's only two. those two, right? It's only those more, two. Yeah. We need more purple hippos and magic. We need we need a we need a new Feldegriff just so I can get a hippo token because that sounds amazing. Oh, I'm amazed they haven't done that yet. That sounds like something that they will definitely do in a Commander Legends. There's got to be a new a new Feldegriff in a Commander Legends coming up. Absolutely, the hippo the hippo tokens themselves will sell out. They'd be hot hot commodities, I think. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Krim, what do you have as a creature you wish was a commander? So this was a card that I loved when it was when I when I had just started getting into like standard and stuff like that, and it's Void Mage Prodigy. So of course, I know in the realm of two drops, it's still it's it's only a two one. Okay, it's no. it's not even that bad. It's not even that bad. It's a two one, <laughs> and uh, you can you can pay two. Blue, blue, sack a wizard, counter a spell. Or you could unmorph it for one blue. This card was the coolest card when I got into the standard. I'd actually gotten to an FNM and gotten locked, like gotten like countered out of a game because somebody just like sacked a ton of their wizards. It's like, 
that card's dope i want that in my life <laughs> like like <laughs> so uh th this would just be perfect at a commander right i i think it would be hilarious for for like a wizard tribal deck i mean it's not eminence so you know it's not gonna be like be like inala so and mm. and you're only you're locked into blue so i i this has been a, a card that's like near and dear to my heart this artwork the onslaught art specifically i don't mind the promo art but like i love the onslaught art so was yeah. this like a pro tour winner or something art or something or no what the, it the was an invitational card yeah invitational there card was set. an invitational card yes hmm. the original art is invitational yeah right Honestly, we have yes. a counter spell in the command zone um, i don't uh, believe so. i think like urtai is the closest thing yeah, but don't you you have to like sacrifice a, an enchantment to counter something, right? That yeah, no, yeah. sacrifice a wizard. I mean, <laughs> this is sack yeah. a wizard, but this one is yeah, like creature cheaper. This is cheaper, and on top of that, you're locked into mono color, and because it's it's I I would love for a t like it's the most wizard thing you could do. I love wizards. Honestly, I don't think this would be that bad. Like compare this to a Nala. I would be much more afraid of Anala because at least, like this card, at least you have to sacrifice a wizard and you have to play pay two blue blue to do it. Which is, I mean, once it gets going, obviously Yo, it's very obnoxious. Like but, you get locked out eventually. But Tomer, what if I morph it from the command zone? I just oh, what is this face down Commander card? morph. <laughs> it could it could be anything. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be. I don't think it'd be too powerful, but. It does not sound enjoyable. <laughs> the worst part of Commander Clash podcast is there's no option to kill Krim first, I've realized. <laughs> yeah. At least in Commander Clash, when this happens, we can just kill him. We don't have that option during the podcast. <laughs> Void Mage Prodigy isn't even that bad. It's not even that annoying. I lose a creature. I lose I mean, a creature. Eventually, when you get to the point where, I, I don't know how, but eventually you'll have a, a, a situation where you have more wizard tokens or whatever than you have uh then you have to oh, worry yeah. about spells to be guys like eventually we'll get obnoxious but honestly like this versus like a zombie i'd be more afraid of a zombie i'd be more right. afraid of like inala yep well, oh yeah. definitely inala i mean it eminence seems, is yeah. just broken so I of, I of the wizards <laughs> like like i think this is perfect and it's such for me this was such a a big card from onslaught they had really cool like like tribal support cards this rot lung reanimator uh like onslaught just came with all of them and it was so much fun to play all right all right i mean i mean you kind of won me over but also i i would shudder to see it in the command <laughs> <laughs> I over. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you Willbender. How about that? We'll meet in the middle at Willbender. Willbender is you know not... it's always a Willbender. Anyway. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess at that point it, it would always be a Willbender <laughs> yeah, if it I'll were a commander. Literally. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to my uh, first card, and this is a card that I feel like when people ask this question, it's one of the top answers, and I think it's for good reason. This is Tamanoa, which is a Naya creature. Even the name kind of sounds legendary, by the way. But so, so it's a Naya creature. It's red, green, and white. So three mana for a 2-4 spirit that says whenever a non-creature source you control deals damage, you gain that much life. So if you're casting like earthquake effects or whatever and you're dealing damage to your opponents that way or to their creatures that way, you're going to gain a a truckload of life very easily off a bunch of like different burn spells but also other sources as well too like if you had like a, a pyrohemia or something like that on the battlefield you can gain a bunch of life by just activating pyrohemia dealing one damage to all creatures and gaining that much life as well and that opens up this cool like life gain slash burn deck um we've seen kind of that in like fire song and sunspeaker uh, more recently in Dominaria, the buy a box, uh, but it was like six mana in Boros and kind of bad, honestly, like it just causes too much. Tamanoa gives you access to green, which could be really cool. Maybe you can use like tornado effects or whatever uh, to, to to make it more, more cool. Three mana, it seems like it's like the perfect thing. Even the name kind of sounds legendary. I don't know, Tamanoa just sounds cool and, and legendary like. Maybe, I, I, maybe it's just like I don't know the lore behind it, so I'm totally totally off on that but i don't know it looks cool what do you guys think it it looks like 
a, an orange or a tamarind <laughs> that is also like a nervous system. So, uh, like, like, I like it even more now. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it'd be a fun commander. I, yeah. I do. I, I had considered Soulfire Grandmaster when I was going through different cards, and it's kind of similar, giving instant sorceries lifelink, but I decided it probably wouldn't be fun because its second ability just lets you like yeah. take the turns really easily. So I think if we want turns. this style of effect, I think Taminoa is probably the way to go. Yeah, I, I like Soulfire Grandmaster too for the same reason. But yeah, like I said, is it, like you said, it's like so abusable with extra turn spells that it kind of detracts from the cool part of the, the card. And this card is literally just the cool part of what what you want. Like you want that life gain plus burn thing combined. And I think it's, I think it'll be really cool. It'll be really cool. Yeah. Card is shockingly good for a cold snap card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like looking at the art. I'm like, this card must be super old. What set is it from? Cold Snap. Cold Snap. It's like pretty, pretty decent card. This feels yeah. like an Alara card. Yeah. I thought I thought this came out in Alara. I didn't even know that it was from Cold Snap until right now, actually. Yeah, this is like old school. When when did Cold Snap come out? Uh, in the Ice Age, 2008, maybe 2007. Some, 2006. Somewhere. I, you were correct. You're somewhere close. around there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty yeah. close. And it's just three mana for a two four. I mean, I guess maybe maybe uh, three color was harder to cast back then, so they were more willing to. I don't even know. I don't know what they, what they had back then. It was a long time ago. But yeah, that was pretty cool. All right, uh, I'll move on to Richard. Your second pick. What, what you got for us? All right, I'm going to fix your mono white woes <laughs> right here. Mentor of the meek in the command zone. Boom. We don't have a good white weenie commander, right? We don't have good white card advantage. Well, you don't need good white card advantage if it's always in your command zone, right? You can always cast it when you need to. It's fair. You just pay uh, the extra mana to draw a card. Uh, only one additional, so it's not too much, but you can't just like go off. And then and what are you going to do? Just play more white weenie card? Like, right? It's fine, right? It's balanced. <laughs> like, So I, I actually think white is lacking one of these cards where you generate tremendous um card advantage out of the command zone right so mentor the meek I, mentor I, I think it'd be great i'm actually surprised there isn't a commander like this already from from mono white to be honest with you it's, it's <sighs> i think the problem is they consider it a color pie break <laughs> they used oh, to oh, they used to. They oh that's what you. they call yeah. the color pie <laughs> yeah. break okay no, okay no, i think i think mark rosewater has been overruled more recently or or at least they're more willing oh. to reconsider it and so hopefully maybe we'll get a re, uh, a new version of this all right I'll, I'll fix it with a color pie when when a creature <laughs> with power two or less enters a battlefield you may draw a card unless any opponent pays 10. <laughs> oh okay <laughs> right i'm taxing the you either it's two. fine <laughs> it's I'll white take now it. right I'll take it. Power it two to... or less and tax i would like it to be a dog if possible because i think a dog tribe is needed mm. <laughs> just saying the funny thing is it's not even very good like every other color is getting like toskies that's just like yeah. hey play this with a bunch of creatures and draw 40 cards a turn yeah imagine... and white's like oh we gotta play this and it has to live and then we have to <laughs> cast something and then we gotta pay a mana and we draw a card and every other drive is just like toskying people so i think it'd be super super safe i don't even i mean it's good for white but compared to other card advantage commanders it's not even that good compared to a lot of them it's not even close <laughs> you haven't lived a dream it. till you raise the alarm a two one one yeah, paid then four mana two and drew two cards imagine oh, that's Im cooking imagine paying mana to draw cards in 2021 magic <laughs> can you imagine like 2022 magic instead of pay instead of having thing no mana to draw cards you're you're given mana to draw cards yeah like, yeah you, get, you, you get a treasure card. token and a card <laughs> i if we're if we we're gonna do this gonna be we, real we also got to add inspiring commander the the arena exclusive mm. not in paper card but it's the same ability it's a six drop one four oh uh, except you yeah, don't yeah. have to pay mana just whenever a creature power two or less enters the battlefield you draw a card and gain a life like would, would that be broken bro like as a commander broken six mana to cast six mana six mana yeah is it more too. broken than I, it, 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 it needs to draw eight cards etv for yeah, six mana it would be like, underpowered what? at six mana what what if what if it was you can't even three. cast additional creature 
<laughs> you don't have any mana. You're in white. You can't ramp. <laughs> what about at three mana? That uh, might be scary. It was. I. I, I hmm. oh boy. I think maybe I'm just tainted by Toski and how strong it is. Because when I compare things to Toski effects, it's just like even that doesn't sound that strong. It is power two or less. I think if you made it three mana and you said power one or less, I think it would be absolutely fine. Two or less is kind of like pushing it, but like. I don't know, man. After I saw it's got to be powerful. Like, one is too bad. One you can't play anything. There's a lot of like yeah. legit creatures at two. One well, Tobolar like, though is in you... werewolves, right? So like that that's way more restricting than than like I don't know mono white making two or less. I don't know. People people got mad when I played werewolves on Commander Clash. But I don't know what happened there. I now have a order. very good idea what happened. I, we got Blood Moon. It's <laughs> <laughs> a werewolf deck. Of course, you get Blood Moon. <laughs> I don't think it was the werewolves that made anybody mad. I, th I think that's part of the werewolf tribe. Honestly, the moons are part of the werewolf tribe. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Chaos Moon, sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think this at three mana may probably is is a little bit too much. But also, you're in mono white, right? Like you're still restricted to mono white. I think yeah. also one power isn't too bad because there's a lot of like white has a lot of token generators that make one ones like you put like a retreat to a marrier on the battlefield and something like that and you just like play lands and you make one ones and you draw cards that's that's nice it, that's a combo it sounds fun to build around though like yeah. it's actually like white would have some synergies other than like oh I get an artifact or I tutor up an equipment or whatever like it would be nice to see white have more outside of equipment and life gain, I think, that you can build around. And, like, if we just add one more color and we go, like, Sithis, right? Like, whenever uh, whenever you cast an enchantment for two mana, whenever you cast an enchantment, you, you gain one life and you draw a card. Would this be so much worse at three in a mono white deck? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right, so that was, that was an interesting one. Uh, moving on, Seth. Uh, what do you got for us? So one of the things I look for in commanders is just unique effects. I want things that don't exist already in commander. And one of my favorite cards is super unique. Swans of Burn Argol. So Swans of Burn Argol, it's two in two hybrid Azorius mana for a four three flying bird spirit. And it says if a source would deal damage to it, prevent that damage and the source's controller draws cards equal to the damage that was prevented. So We've played hit our swans, draw some cards <laughs> decks in like modern where the idea yep, is you play like yep, seismic yeah. assault and keep hitting your swans and eventually draw your deck. But I don't actually think that swans would have much combo potential in commander because all the combo pieces require like red cards. So if you're stuck in Azorius, I was actually trying to figure out how we would build the swans deck in preparation <laughs> for this cast. Isn't it like Gideon's you approach. Deep. Yeah, you gotta go Gideon's blasted. approach. There's some like yeah, psionic blast. <laughs> There's some like damage to attacking creatures cards that white gets, or like yeah. colorless, horrible removal spells that like <laughs> deal three damage to something for five mana. So I actually don't think it would be too much of a combo piece. And I think it'd just be fun. You'd have like this fun game of Commander where if you play it, hopefully you can get advantage of it. And other people are going to love it if they have earthquakes and stuff because they can turn that into like a hand refuels and wheel style effects. So I think it'd be just a really interesting card to exist as a Commander. And I don't even think it'd be very good. I think it'd be a pretty bad Commander, but a very unique Commander. I like that. And you'd have to go super deep with like the janky ways to, to deal damage to yourself. I, I spend eight mana to play Ugin to shock my or to yes. bolt my own command. Eight mana draw three. Draw three. There. Yeah. <laughs> There's no better card draw in Azorius. Combo or synergy? <laughs> Broken. Either Broken. way. Busted. Broken. Yet yeah, confirmed. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Krim. What do you got for us? In the world of also something that's unique, I picked some cards that I just liked, like I have a soft spot for, and some cards that I think are also just like really fun, like for designs. And I don't know if there's anything like this for a commander, but Abyssal Persecutor. I think the idea that I can't win the game and none of you can lose the game as the commander would be hilarious. I mean, <laughs> of course I think that's great, but like the the thing is like you could just sit there, you could cheat, you could, all your opponents can just run wild, you can politic. Like think about the politics aspects of that. Like hey, I'll play my commander, you know, and whatnot and you can live. 
I'll save you. I'm like your guardian demon. <laughs> it's fine. Just, now you have this incentive to make sure I don't lose my demon. <laughs> it's like having your opponents play up like you know, like like some kind of like platinum angel effect or whatever, you know, the and keeping angel. you alive. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool as a commander. Because <laughs> even if you kill them, if you hit them with like 21 commander damage, they can't lose. Doesn't matter. It's the, the ultimate trying to get second commander, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are truly the deputy forever. I actually like it. Like, imagine making an abyssal persecutor infect deck and he gives somebody 10 effect. And you're like, all right. Yeah. You live as long as this persecutor lives. <laughs> yep. This and like this card is also special to me because when it was in standard, it was round when Doomblade was the main removal spell. And so I remember one game at some tournament, I actually could not kill my... <laughs> I struggled. I couldn't find my Jace to bounce it. My opponent would have been dead at any point if I could just remove this card. <laughs> but I couldn't. And so I think that'd be hilarious to see in Commander as I'm just like, I'm just sitting there and everyone's like, I don't know. I could see my own, like, my own table trying to find ways to like give it Hexproof or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, that actually sounds really sweet. Like, that would have a really unique impact on the game because you're keeping everyone alive, which then, like, incentivizes everyone else to yeah. either work with you or keep the Persecutor alive because that's keeping them alive. So I, it yeah. sounds like it would lead to a really unique game of Commander, and I'm all about that. That's, a, that's what I like is those weird, different kind of games. So I, I would love to see Abyssal Persecutor as a Commander. Can you lose if you mill out with Persecutor on can, the board? Can I lose? Or, Anybody. Or no, you the cannot lose. Can't. The opponents You can't cannot. lose, period. Yeah. <laughs> no no possible ways, yeah. And I can't win. <laughs> wait, wait, but... So, okay, I'm confused. So let's say we make this, like, indestructible hexproof, and we sit there, <laughs> right? And we all mill out. Yep. But, you, and, yeah. And then Eventually, so, Krim will die. Yeah. I, I will die eventually, because then oh, so I will, will mill out. out. And so then he will yeah. mill out. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then everyone else dies. It's instantly. a draw. <laughs> Come yep. on! Okay, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> I would totally build it that way too. Somehow to make it live forever. I, and then I, it's always a draw. I'm gonna make. I feel this is a deck. I feel I make an abyssal persecutor. I give you a, an abyssal persecutor, and I make them all hexproof and destructible. And we and, draw and, go until Moto dies. Yep. Right. We no one can lose and no one can win. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is if that you clone this? Like you uh, a fractured identity or something like that? Is this slow you know, play in a I real mean, in, in tournament realm? What what goes on? Well, I mean, oh. people run Cyclonic Rifts and Commanders, so there are other but, ways well, to but get the thing oh, here is, so I guess that's true. You can bounce. Well, so so if you, need... you have one though, if the Cyclonic Rifter has yeah. one, so then that doesn't change anything. Yeah, they still have. They still need to find a way to <laughs> they have to deal but with. There's got to be some way to construct a board state where like this is stuck there and yeah. no one can win. Period. And I wonder what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i'm sure there is we'll have to try to figure that out that could be fun that actually, you know what yeah. we should also do we gotta do a paper commander game where we actually play these cards as our commander oh, that would be a fun commander that would be a like lot actually of fun. see the abyssal persecutor deck or the swans deck or whatever yeah yeah so maybe, oh, that'd be amazing that could be maybe that could be an incentive for people to 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 mention over here what which are your top four uh of these uh chosen uh, would be commanders let us know maybe maybe in the future everybody we'll don't up. jump at void mage prodigy i know you're all excited <laughs> i know everyone collectively like yeah oh, i love I, blue i feel Let's they will go. i feel they will because a lot of people like like seeing people trolled but they don't want to be in that game itself so i feel like there's going to be a lot of answers what's, what's the saying for. not my city <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that actually sounds really sick. The Persecutor. I, I kind of want to play it just in, like, the 99 of Dex 2 just to see what happens. Uh, but as a commander, it would be very sick. <laughs> Abyssal Persecutor those. week? We all build Abyssal Persecutor decks. <laughs> Hid Hidden, <laughs> commanders. <laughs> Hidden commanders. Hidden <laughs> commanders. Uh, all right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, I got one for everybody. Uh, this, is, this is one that I don't think is mentioned that often, but it has a uh, nostalgic uh, feels to me. Uh, this is Maelstrom Archangel. This is a five-color, five-five flying angel, Wooburg. 
So one of each color. Um, and it has a really powerful combat trigger. It says whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may play a non-land card from your hand without paying its mana cost. Um, so when I got back into Magic for the, for the first time, um, I got back with a bunch of my friends and we played very casually during a Lara block. We all got a pre-con and we're jamming it and we, I think we all went in on like a booster box or something like that. And I remember opening up Meals from Archangel and I'm like, whoa, this card is so cool. It's a five color card. It's five five flying. The art is sick. The, the ability is so powerful. It's not legendary though. And it, it was kind of like a shock to me that it wasn't legendary. Um, I think these days, I think it's still pretty darn strong. Like obviously the most powerful thing you're going to do with it is like you can deal combat damage and you put in like an omniscience and then you play the rest of your deck, uh, your, your hand for free or whatever. But you know what? I think we have enough commanders that already do that. That that's probably Kalia. not a concern. Yeah. Like, I mean, you have, you can do, you can do Kalia. You could even put down the omniscience with like a Joda by being five man instead of having to do commander damage or Narc set or whatever instead. There's plenty of ways to do that already. What I really want to do with Mails from Archangel is I want to do five color Angel Tribal. I don't think there is a five color legendary. No, I don't think there is a five there color is. legendary. There is. There is. Yeah, Morophon. Morophon. Uh, no, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want a Morophon deck. But like, Angels are wow, in picky, all picky, colors. Picky. I know. I know. He's, he's, I love him, but I don't want him as the angel leader. Angels are in all colors of magic, and they cost a lot of mana. Males from Archangel would make a ton of sense as a five color angel that can cheat out these big, expensive angels. And I think it would be super fun. That's a pretty convincing argument. I, I mean, we have the Ur Dragon for dragons, and dragons are pretty similar to angels, and angels don't have anything like that at all. Plus, if you're worried about being too powerful, we got Golos. <laughs> like, yeah. Golos is so insanely busted that I don't think that Melstrom Archangel would actually be, like, it wouldn't even be the best five color commander. I think Golos would still clearly be better than it. So, is I'm actually really surprised it wasn't legendary too. I just, like, assumed that it was. I don't even think Golos is that good, right? Golos is that good? Oh, yeah, that oh good. I'm actually shocked that Wizards hasn't made a 5C Angel. Yeah, like, really? You want to sell some products? Yeah, Five Angels angel, always sell. Good. <laughs> well, I guess, you know what, we're not, we're not done with Shadows yet. Right? Or not Shadows. The, uh, whatever, Innistrad Tokyo Drift. <laughs> the, 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 the thing here is, we, we could have a 5 color Angel sometime soon, who knows? But but what if oh, but, uh, called shot five color Avis in return boom, boom. I mean Ooh. boom it could work but you know her it's okay instead how about a her memorial <laughs> oh god oh, <laughs> too soon too soon oh, I no. I I think I think that'd be really cool though yeah like having a like the Ur Angel or whatever you want to call it <laughs> the I. Angels are everywhere, and they're all over Magic, and the fact that we don't have a five-color one is kind of sad. It's kind of sad. I just want Sigarda and Gisela to be in the same deck, you know? You know? Gisela? Yeah, whatever. Oh, okay, so apparently it's, 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 it's a, it, no, it's, it's a German word. Or is it, it? Yeah, it's a German name, and I asked Phil, aka uh, uh, Brewer's Kitchen, okay. uh, who, is, who is German, how you would say it, and he was like, Gisela. I've been what, saying what it if, wrong, but what if whole Phil is time. like German Seth? What if he's just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's possible, or, is like an epic, or an epic troll? He's like, what would I know? He used to say whatever pronunciation possible, and I just repeat that it. That does like not sound right. Uh, I mean, I probably he can't be Gisela. He said it some way, and I tried my best to to say it back. Uh, I think it's Gisela. Apparently, like, there's no like soft G's in German, or it's it's very rare. So, like, it's hmm. Gisa and Geralf, not Geralf, you know. Anyway, <laughs> a little tidbit. I, I, if there's any German-speaking uh, uh, viewers, please let us know uh, how you would say Gisela. Um, and if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, we got Richard. What, what do you got for us? All right, we're going deep. Bouldering Karak now. I'll excuse what? you guys what? if you don't know what this card is, okay? <laughs> I had to look it up. <laughs> Two Man black, green, three, three, creature, zombie, Are you crocodile. trolling? 
are you trolling? Oh, I know. <laughs> I know why he wants this. I know why he okay. wants this. Crocodile. There's 26 crocodiles. Yes! There's 26 crocodiles oh. in all of Magic. There are zero, <laughs> zero legendary. What we need is actually a Saltai <laughs> crocodile because we have some Demir crocs, uh, black crocs, and uh, green crocs. Uh, the closest I came up with. We're not talking this, about this shoes, is, right? This, this is the best one. These are definitely shoes. They can, they can. <laughs> three, three lifelink trample is the best we got, okay? So I nominate Moldering Croc to <laughs> ascend the throne. Uh, but we, we seriously do need a Saltai Crocodile Commander. We have 26. That's enough for a tribal deck. Like one, one other, they, they, even, they even oracled an alligator into a croc to make it happen. <laughs> Root water alligator is actually a crocodile now. Like They're that, setting that seems it up. blasphemous to me. But uh, yeah, I, I think we need a legendary crocodile. And if all else fails, it's a zombie. You can have a you can have a black green zombie legendary. That's right? a, it's a trample life linker, and that's it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like I feel like there's an even better option. But as as a crocodile, is there? Okay, so it, I think I would nominate Emperor Croc. No, no, no. I would good. I would nominate Scuttle Gator. Hmm? Scuttle Gator? Scuttle Gator's not bad. That's a six mana six six defender one. Six six, yep. Oh. And it's a it's a crab turtle crocodile. So not only do you Ooh. get your crab or not only do you get your crocodile le legendary, you also get crab and turtle overlapping tribal uh leadership. Can you Crowd. imagine? We have. Can you imagine some the overlapping synergies between crabs, turtles, and I can't. crocodiles? It's <laughs> it's too much. I just can't handle it. What if it adapts and then loses defender? <laughs> would you would you actually be happy playing that as your commander though? What if we did? I think I think Richard is just 100%. trying to let us know that he'll beat us with a ham sandwich. That's that's that's. I, I will one hundred percent. But he wanted Storm Crow as his first one. Oh, obviously, he's going to be lots of beat us with a ham sandwich. Next. <laughs> That's actually, you already called shot his next uh, nominee. A little hand sandwich, not even a magic I'm, card. I'm surprised you're not just, you sure you don't want to just play whatever the Piper card that came in Commander Legends? I, yo, that's not available on Bodo. I've been trying oh, to play it. Oh, or else you would have yeah, tried it. Oh, okay. I, I, I tried already. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> but it's not, it's not any creature type, though. That's, I remember, remember oh, someone no. corrected me. It doesn't oh, count. right. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I, I think we actually need one. Of, maybe that's what I should uh, should nominate. Like one of those, except it's a, a changing. Chain yeah, so a you, can, you can make any color, like tribal deck you want. But crocodiles. A strict downgrade from Morophon. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Or like two, two, two CMC Morophon, like downscale ability, so you'd actually put it into decks. Well, do we want okay. an all in one, or do we want every single? weird tribe to have its own specific legendary. They I all need the their own identity. Because Morophon is the, the universal 5C tribal, right? But you never feel good coming with a Morophon deck, no. right? Why? People will mock you. Just like if you put changelings in, people will mock you. Right? <laughs> so you need you need the purebred croc you know, legendary. Yeah, Morphon's just filler. You just play that oh, until okay. they finally print the right commander wow. for your drive. That's how that's how I feel at least. And once that commander okay, arrives, that's that's the exception. I, but I always feel dirty if I got to play Morphon. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to make a Scarecrow commander and you fill it up with Changelings. Oh, oh, I do that. That. That's ridiculous, yeah. right? And then also just throw Tusky in there. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Oh yeah, this is a bird deck. Let me throw a Tusky. It flies, right? <laughs> I mean, you know what? It makes sense. Richard did just try to sl slap the honorary title on a few other cards, so why not have Toski just be honorary changeling? This is ham, tra this is ham sandwich tribal. I have Toski as my <laughs> best Whoa. ham sandwich. Toski is a good piece of ham, okay? You Silver can. Piper as my commander. He does get the cheese, you know? He brings home the cheddar. Uh, <laughs> Which you need for a ham sandwich. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on, uh, Seth, what do you got for us? All right, we're going to write one of the great wrongs in Magic's history, which is we're going to make Uncle Esteban into a legend. Uncle Esteban is a really, really not a legend. I thought this was an uncle. That's, not, a, that's not, not, a, a that's not an uncle pun, by that's the way. That's not a legend. <laughs> it's... A th one in three black for a one three human, and it says prevent all damage that would be dealt to it by creatures. This card... 
I don't know why it's not legendary. How many people have Uncle Estevans running around? This is obviously a specific character. It's the definition of legendary. And while it's not a very good card, there's a lot of possibilities. Like Beard Tribal, it's got one of the sweetest beards right. in Magic. Maybe Angry Hobo Tribal, if <laughs> right. you want to do like homeless looking people with axes. The there's Dude a ton Tribal. Of cool he combos the dude, with yes. Pestilence, you know? Like Ropes. he doesn't take damage. <laughs> Ropes. Oh, he's my creature, gotta... never mind. <laughs> Yeah, oh, there's so, bad. so I I don't know. God, why that card is it's terrible. Not legendary. Look at that. It's rate. not a good card. <laughs> it's not a good card, but it really should be legendary. And I would definitely build like a beard tribal deck around it. Did this precede legendaries? This is like the dark. No, legendaries were were a thing. <laughs> there were legendaries. They existed already. Yeah. Although you know what? It's also from like a, a, another cycle of cards that was also time shifted that I think should have been legendary or the avatars. So you know what? I feel like yeah, like th this this whole set. A lot of the time shifted cards weren't legendary. That probably should have been. I can't believe and with a they name picked like Uncle Esteban. I can't believe they actually picked him for a time spiral time shifted version. It, like, it was also in fourth edition. They reprinted <laughs> Uncle Esteban multiple times. There's well, that just lets you know there's tons of Uncle Estebans. That's why he's not legendary. Yeah, maybe it's a maybe hilarious it. card. He can't be hit by creatures. Maybe it's because <laughs> the, the everybody axe. has their own Uncle Esteban. You know? Yeah. That crazy guy who lives in the woods. That your, your parents Esteban don't is... talk about. You know, <laughs> the problem child. <laughs> and he collects skulls in the woods, and he's very bad. <laughs> hanging out with Danzig too much. Yeah, very okay. disappointing. <laughs> oh, family member. All right, I I, I think I I'll play this for you know when we do our paper paper. Oh, we, oh my I'll god! I'll use Uncle Istavan and equip him with the real axe, a blood forged battle axe. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's so We're Richard. gonna fix this little one power <laughs> axe business here. Oh, and look at—he's a one-three. Look at that killer axe he's like this <laughs> crazy looking huge guy with an axe and he's a one three everything about that card is just so wrong maybe maybe it's actually a cosplayer so it's made out of foam it should have been a three one <laughs> yeah it should have been a three one with that be a three one and it'd be hilarious because he has one toughness so the creatures can't kill him because he's uncle is <laughs> he'd be too good then though because like what, Wh what are you gonna do what the no no, it, no i mean in like imagine if you're playing the dark uh, a sealed format of the dark you know you're playing i don't a draft. think i don't think limited existed back then did it <laughs> well maybe they were planning on it maybe that's why they brought him back for like uh time sh spiral time shifted they're like wow this is a powerhouse <laughs> in time spiral draft <laughs> You know, this limited that, bomb. Yeah, a limited bomb. You equip stuff to him. You enchant him, and he just can't lose. You know, you just can't lose. A terror That's at the definitely battlefield. true. <laughs> uh, all right, I like it. Please don't pick that as the commander. I don't want to lose so <laughs> close, bud. <laughs> all right, moving on. Krim, what else do you got for us? Well, I'm gonna. I'm also digging kind of deep here, real deep. Uh, and usually a card that I don't. I don't. I think I play often. It's out of my wheelhouse. It's Opposition Agent. Um, and it's... Now, I know, you're all thinking... You're, Krim, you're right. You never play that card. But Seth, head in hands. He's like, why don't you play that more? And <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. There needs to be more effects that stop people from tutoring. I hate tutors. I hate tutors. I I, I don't like them. It doesn't stop so, you from tutoring, though. What's up with that, that? But you know what? I don't even tutor. So the, I, the one time I do tutor, like, I I'd actually had it stolen from me. But you know what? Uh, yeah. So this... This will then give me the ability to just, other than that, like, it just shuts off tutoring. If you don't tutor, you don't care about this commander whatsoever, right? So, problem solved. And it cuts all the green decks off their annoying ramp cards. I feel like this would <clears throat> be the the commander most likely to kill the format. <laughs> like, I think if you want to have, have a mass exodus of <clears throat> players from commander, <laughs> it's making cards like Opposition Agent into Legends. No, like, why? This guarantee... Why? This would just guarantee that Krim would, would show Opposition Agent in his command zone and the entire table would collectively agree to kill him before they started playing the game. You know? Yeah, like, but you know what? You can't kill me because you're going to sit there I, with like 14 Farseeks in hand and I'll be like, oh, Farseeks don't have attack. That's unfortunate. I, I think we need to agree now to kill Krim for his next episode of Commander Clash just for suggesting you know, just for suggesting you know, this. this is, we I'm, need to shut off the tuners, so though. I, I'm really okay with this because 
I already know that Krim's going to be on black every single game, and I already know that Opposition Agent's going to be in his deck every single game. So at least now I know that he has it, you know? Like, it's not a question about whether or not he has it, and should I play into three open black mana? Now I know Tomer, he does. You, Tomer, you knew that before, yeah. and you still played right into it. <laughs> and, and at least it's mono black. It's so mono black. You, you, can't, yeah, counters, you can't play so the speed of Maybe that'd be fine. I'm actually happier yeah. with opposition agent in his command zone rather, rather than 99, <laughs> weirdly. Well, it's very easy. Line. When you play Krim, you just assume he always has opposition agent. Yeah, but now he doesn't have access to like blue or whatever as well. Yeah. Right. Like... Right. See, you're in mono black, and really all I'm doing is just do getting doing what I wanted to do. Maybe if fine, if this can't be the commander, I get it. I get it. Sure. Whatever. I, I, but then give me think... more cards that shut off tutoring. This is too strong though. Not in a generic deck, but like in a deck specifically built around opposition agent. Like you scheming symmetry with your opposition agent in the command zone or like any one of these effects, right? Like you can build the ruin. <laughs> yeah, you have like half the combo piece in your command zone. Well, so hold like on. not I... in a normal fair deck, but like an actual opposition agent deck. I think that actually be pretty strong, pretty obnoxious at least. Is, is that any worse than like Turgrid though? Like we have Turgrid. The... That's pretty bad in the command zone too. Yeah, I mean, but do we like... I I think Turgrid is worse than this. Do we need to add more? <laughs> At least Turgrid's five mana, and yeah, I mean, I think they're probably equally flash. <laughs> obnoxious. But how will we shut off the tutors? <laughs> what about what about I, just like a what about just a uh, a thing that shuts off all tutoring, including yourself? Like what happened to fine. those? Remember that's symmetrical fine. stacks? I miss that. It, it, I, what if? Uh, yeah, okay. Would you be okay with this being my commander if it was symmetrical? Yes, so hundred percent. I, I think. So I think symmetrical and make it so maybe you can't combo with it by wording it like Ashiok sort of. So if your opponent searches your library, you get them, but you can't like field of ruin them and take all their lands or scheming symmetry and take all their cards. Like maybe that would make it okay. That would make so me some version of it. Board. Yeah, I'd be a hundred percent on board. As it is though, it is too broken. The three two with flash. It's more just like too obnoxious. <laughs> oh, obnoxious! <laughs> I think obnoxious is obnoxious should exist. I think. It, Come I, on, I would just Come love on. it with Turgrid. Like, is it better than Turgrid? Maybe. Well, no, no. Turgrid like... is not obnoxious. Turgrid is very good. <laughs> like, it is. It is good. It will yeah. win the game. This, it's like okay. I just don't tutor into you. <laughs> if it was legal, I would just, I would just lump it with like Turgrid players, like. I would rather not, but you know what? Like, it's not going to break the game if they existed. And I don't think it would be popular either. Like, it would be about... It would appeal to the same people who like Turgrid, right? Like, <laughs> they're fine. What do you, th <laughs> what do you think uh, of doing it in a way that excludes lands or ramp? Like, that's the other thing oh, that whoa, always whoa, makes whoa, me whoa, a little whoa, bit. Whoa, like, whoa. I get <laughs> shutting down, like, Demonic Tutor for my combo piece. Like, that seems like a play pattern I want to hate on. But you really want to be like, oh, here's this poor kid that cast a rampant growth, and now he doesn't get to play magic today. Is <laughs> you know, are you, we can't are you playing? Him. Are you playing green? <laughs> Would be a shame if I hard swatted every cultivate you played. Well, it's, it's also like it would also encourage green players to. Find... I won't feel bad. <laughs> you know, the numerous other green sources of ramp that is available to them, like mana rocks exist, you know? Yeah, just mana play mana rocks. rocks. That's fine. That's uh, fine. Fertile growth effects exist. You Those know, are like, great. I, I swear when we first made this list, being a progress was, I think it's deleted now, but I think that was the next card down. I, I it was make one... all the all the ramp players <laughs> switch to mana rocks so then you can make <laughs> being a progress. Can they get partner? Okay, if I can get it. So opposition agent and being a progress could be partners. Boom, right oh, there. You're, green. you're becoming all that you hate. Yeah, but sometimes you have to, you know, draw from dark magics to stop the worst. So okay. You're, you're the so you're in the Batman is what you're saying. Right? Yeah, okay. look, all right. <laughs> What's whatever Commissioner Gordon's uh outro little monologue thing in Dark Knight, that's me. <laughs> the hero the hero we need, but not the one we deserve. The one, or, or the yeah. other way around, I don't know. He'll run from it because he can take it. <laughs> Krim getting knocked out first every single game. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you know what? I will I will die first, but knowing that I slowed down the game from tutors. 
oh, that's good. I love it. I want to dunk on tutoring and dunk on ramp. I don't want to just stop it. I want to dunk, hang on the rim, shatter the backboard, and then as I'm falling down, I topple over on you and stare down and walk away. <laughs> like well, that's a position agent in the command zone would would Gross. probably do that. That would meet that goal. Gross. Um. All right. So uh, we'll move on to to one of mine. And I, I got to mention this. This is not like uh, super, um, what would you say, original. This is another one that like when people ask this question, this is the type of stuff that pops up uh, pretty often. And it's a Nephilim. Nephilim, uh, for people who don't know, they came in the original Innistrad block way back in like 2005 or whatever. Ravnica, actually. Yeah. Oh, original Ravnica, yeah. Original yeah, Ravnica. Guild Pact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was Guild Pact. Yeah, well, Guild Pact Ravnica was... Ravnica block, sure. Ravnica block. Yeah, it was in Guild Pact. Ravnica block 2006, I think. And Good these year. were four-color creatures, um, which I think was maybe like the first time we've seen four-color creatures. I'm not quite sure. Um, so they're all missing one color. And they all have really cool, like, out-there effects. And uh, many times when this was asked, you know, after Commander became a thing, you know, in 2010 or so, Mark Rosewater, every single time he's asked about them, he's like, you know, if I could go back in time to make these legendary, I absolutely would. They are very legendary feeling effects. And, you know, like that would be that would be the first thing I would do if we could use Arata that way. My favorite of the bunch uh, is Ink Treader Nephilim. This is red, green, white and blue. So uh, all but black. Um, and it says whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, if that spell targets only Ink Treader Nephilim, copy that spell for each other creature that spell could target. Each copy uh, targets a different one of those creatures. That effect, really, really cool. So like if you, if you cast Giant Growth on Ink Treader Nephilim, you will make a copy of Giant Growth targeting um, all other creatures on, on the battlefield, which is kind of like a Zada on steroids, where Zada only tar you, you target Zada with a spell, uh, you copy it for each other creature. This one copies all all creatures uh, on the battlefield, and you have access to four colors. So, like one of the things with Zada, a, a popular like subsection of Zada players like playing five color Zada, where they'll have Zada as a hidden commander, and they'll use like General Tazri to find her because she's an ally. If you, did, if you had Ink Treader Nephilim, you would basically get the exact same thing going, even better, even stronger of an effect in four colors without that extra extra step required. So I think I think there would be a lot of really happy people if that could be uh, available to people. Yeah, these these were the first cards I thought of. Like, they all really should be legendary, and they would be like Mark Rosor or stuff they're doing today. I feel like four color is the most underserved aspect of Commander. There's like, even now with a decade of designing for Commander almost, there's still very few true four color Commanders. There's some partner pairs, but four color Commanders are really, really scarce. So yeah, it would be great to see more four color Commanders, and making these into Legends would solve a part of the problem. Okay. Well, uh, this I guess no brainer. So easy, easy uh, consensus there. We'll move on. Richard, what do you got for us? All right. This is this is a very self serving suggestion because <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know there are a lot of clock players out there. You know, like yeah, but this one that was for the people. You know, uh, there's nine Kithkin I've never played. There's uh -huh. a reason why I've never played them, and Ooh, that is they blue? are blue. Yes. We don't have any blue legendary Kithkin. We only have Gadok Teague, uh, which is Selesnya, and then we have uh, Bridget. So I nominate Thistledown Liege. And Thistledown Liege uh, is going to be blue, blue white. And uh, it's one and then three hybrid blue white mana. So four CMC, one, three flash. Uh, other white creatures you control get plus one plus one. Other blue creatures you control get plus one plus one. But this unlocks the remaining uh, eight blue Kithkin we can play. And some of them are actually quite good, believe it and or not. These might actually be the better Kithkin of the, of the bunch. You get to unlock the Kithkin counterspell. Yeah, protect my Kithkin. <laughs> no, no, no. Like the the one that, that actually is a counterspell that makes wait, wait. Kithkin. 
<laughs> wait, what? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I think yeah. I played this before, actually. I think I, I used it. About. I used it in one of our, our, our commander <laughs> clashes. But yeah, I, I, I'm very scared because Lord of the Rings is happening, <laughs> and I think wizards might just bury Kim in the ground and pretend it never happened. And they're like hobbits. Hobbits are the thing of magic now, and to keep our franchise partners happy, we're going to just promote Hobbits and not Kithkin, and we'll never see Kithkin again. Do you think we'll get Hobbits instead of Halflings? We have we just got Halflings in the D&D set. Are we going to get straight up Hobbits in the Lord of the Rings set? We'll yes. have like three... I, there's, there's no way If Bilbo way is a have... Halfling, then people will riot, right? Like, but then we have three so. Halfling species in Magic. They're for no reason... <laughs> I feel like they, uh, the IP holders gotta give a little bit. Don't you want your cards to see play? Isn't it better for you if they're like Kithkin, so Richard is playing them on Commander Clash and thousands of people are seeing your characters? Oh, they'll just be in Arado than... where all Kithkin are suddenly hobbits. Yeah, I think Kithkin <laughs> would bite the dust. Or <laughs> I, I think if Wizards had to choose the income brought in by Kithkin or the income brought in by Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the they income. might choose Lord of the Rings. I don't know. I mean, we it's need, be a close one. We need high profile oh. celebs to Professor Love publicly on kith game we need like post malone <laughs> to come on commander clash and be like you know what my favorite tribe is kith game they're the coolest and anybody anybody who i see playing kith game they'll be my best friend and we'll hang out forever then you'd see you'd see that demand spike and off slaps down post malone okay <laughs> I, I i don't know that any one person is powerful enough <laughs> to battle gandalf okay <laughs> Oh, I hope they know. It's all hobbitsies, hobbitsies. That's it. That's all we got. I also, I also <laughs> don't think they're they even intend to bring back Kithkin. They said like the one of the feedback they got from original Lorwyn is that Kithkin did not do well. Like they're they said they were weird and and like odd looking <laughs> in like a mean, bad way. You know, these creepy, you know, creepy, these creepy there's, humanoid yeah. things are yeah, creepy. That was. The I mean, word. they're definitely not adorable. <laughs> I don't know. The script <laughs> like... for them was creepy, but not in the way they were hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> Their eyes. The fan their eyes. Their eyes. Look, I love Kithkin too. I love Kithkin. Have you too. looked at a Kithkin's eyes though? Like, just stare into them. They are well, so lifeless yet also <laughs> terrifying. Like those, those, those black eyes, like a doll's like, eyes. Like, look, <laughs> blow up an image of Thistledown Liege and just stare at it, and and like, yeah, like. But... <laughs> Yeah, Bring but... that up on screen and just have it zoom in. <laughs> but okay, but Shadowmore, Shadowmore was a dark, twisted reflection of Lorewood, so they were supposed to look sinister. But then the lore one version, people were like, "Is creepy." But too. like, but like, there's like sinister, and then there's like, "Yo, that's not cool." <laughs> sinister, and Nightmare that's under the fuel. yeah, that's under the not so cool. We sinister. have like Eldrazi, literally like body horroring people with like that's fine and stuff, but like. That's but great. The Kithkin here, they're crossing a line. Yeah. <laughs> the players. Everything yeah, just look. looks like a like a, a a Safeway brand or a like a, a Kirkland hobgoblin for those that <laughs> like, like <laughs> but with lifeless eyes. Like a yeah. hobgoblin like the Spider-Man villain. <laughs> I want to get some Kithkin merch now to adore my I, I don't know about this. this. The Kithkin <laughs> feel like they need to show criminal here. I, I'm they not saying not they can to your beauty standards. Okay, I, I am not saying they can't show me a lesson. I've already learned my lesson. I pulled up an image. I don't want to look at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> what if like if I made first... you if I made you a Kithkin plushie, you'd keep that and you'd you'd sleep with that near your bed. Well, I'd be I'd be the other concerned. side of scoops. There, there's a little space right there, <laughs> yeah. right there for my Kithkin plushie. <laughs> I'm expecting it for him. I'd be concerned that, that it, every single time I, I looked at it, it would be a reappearing in a different place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's honestly, yeah. I would I would not be able to look anywhere else but at that Kithkin to make sure, <laughs> Richard, you need to leave. You need Don't to leave. Blink. I swore it blinked. I swear. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully we get a Kithkin, and maybe it looks a little bit less <laughs> scary. There's nothing wrong with Kithkin art. <laughs> you mean I hobbits. accept Kithkin as they you are. Just hobbits. give me, give me a bant Kithkin that looks like Toski. Okay. Yeah, it will. <laughs> whatever, a, whatever a Kithkin, whatever a Kithkin deals combat damage, draw a card, and then Kithkin will be the tier one tribe. <laughs> It'll be Frodo. Fair. All right, moving on. Seth, 
what do you got for us for the last last round of creatures? Uh, I love five color commanders. I think I play those more than anything. I wanted to have Genji with the realms, but technically it's not a creature, so it doesn't qualify. But there is one other really sweet five color creature that is not a legend, and that is Chromanicor. Chromanicor. It's a, it's a bestow creature. It's an enchantment creature. It's a five-color 4-4. Four, four. It has flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink, and trample. And you can bestow it on another creature for seven mana, and it gives its stats and those abilities to the creature that you bestow it on. So Pretty hard I think it would be... It would be a, a, a interesting take on a five color commander. We have a decent amount of five color commanders, but we don't really have a five color enchantress commander that I can think of, or a five color like auras Bogglesy style commander. And auras and enchantment creatures in bestow is split between all five colors. I feel like Chromanicor would be a really sweet leader for a new kind of five color deck that we haven't uh, had exist before. I mean, yeah. That, that seems like it'd be pretty cool to just have, and the artwork's pretty sweet. And you know what, Seth? You really do love your five-color commanders. <laughs> I've played... I, I think that is, like, the thing you play the most, right? Like, it, and yeah. I think a chunk of it is Golos, and you're always convinced that there's... <laughs> It's not broken because I'm going to load it with only time, these cards. Yeah, this time it'll be fair. <laughs> and it's still I've, broken. <laughs> I've, moved, I've moved past that. I've moved past that. I know that's happened a few times in the past, but I've learned my lesson. Once Golo Scouts just crushed everyone, <laughs> that's when it finally clicked. And I was like, okay, like no matter what I do, this is just going to be busted. <laughs> it, I, I, think, I think more alternatives for Seth to not play Golos is good. So I'm yeah, right. just no more Golos, please. Also, we need we need something between a Tog -a -tog and Golos. So like those are the two. I need yeah. something in the middle that's not as bad as a Tog -a -tog, but not as broken as Golos. This one even attacks so well. So. Yeah, I really like this card. It's like original mutate and better. Like this is what you expect to happen when you mash two creatures together that their power and toughness grows rather yeah. than like some weird ETB and then you still have like a four four, right? So stack this on something big, it gets bigger, it has more abilities, you go to town. If only they fix it for a commander though. If I bestow it onto a creature, I I that creature should have commander damage as well. Ooh. I don't know how they would fix that, but oh, that hey, cool. it's simple, they just add the text. It'd, It'd be deal damage. Right? You choose the other one, but somehow you have to add the stats together. No, you just say like it deals damage as though it were a commander, or that you know what I mean, or something like that. So I actually had Chromanticore as my unofficial leader for my five color enchanter stack way back in the day, which you, you, you guys actually played against the deck. Well, it was with Corona instead of Chromanticore back when we did uh, Commander Clash live in GP Vegas 2018. Um, yep. Yeah, so Chromanticore was in the 99, but I also, like, at some play groups, I would just swap out Corona for Chromanticore because that that was what kind of, like, inspired me to make the five-color Enchantress deck in the first place. Um, so I would very much like that to be a, a Legendary. If it was a Legendary, I would just make rebuild that deck in a heartbeat, honestly. It's so sweet. Was it good? Like, was it was it actual fun to Commander to play with? Oh, Chromanticore? It wasn't that strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't yeah. that strong, but it was, it was very cool. Like, you know, you just take... I, I would just be basically, like, enchant any random creature, and then suddenly <laughs> it has, you know, plus four, plus four. It, it was suddenly pretty strong. Be good. It costs yeah. seven mana to do it, so it's not, like... It's not, like, game-breaking or anything, but, like, taking your, like, random enchantress is just, like, a zero two to draw cards and make it, like, a four six that starts bashing in there. Was super fun. I don't know. I liked it a lot. And then once that Enchantress dies, you still have the Chromanticore going around and still bashing face. So I, I liked it a lot. It wasn't like busted, but it was too, super fun. It would enable Manticore Tribal. No, oh my god, Manticore Tribal. Oh no, that's that's There's after the Crocodiles. <laughs> yeah. As soon as we get, it's, as... it's such like an awesome creature type, right? Yeah. Like I don't know why we keep making zombies when we can be making Manticores, <laughs> right? Yeah, like I, I don't know not more of them. Yeah, uh, it's... I can tell you why because Manticores don't move products, Richard. <laughs> yeah. like, like, like cuddly cats. How about a lion with wings? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't call it a cuddly. I don't know what what artwork you're like. Oh, you also think Kif can look cute too? So I don't know. No, no, no. What I'm saying is they make just like they make flying cats today. That's what they do, right? Okay. I'm like, why don't you just make a Manticores, right? You could have like lion things flying in the air, right? 
Make them cute, yeah. Kitty versions of them. Kitty man. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Looks like it's gonna like look at this. What is what set is this from? Crimson Manicore. Here they're born. No, 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 from uh, from Legends. Like that art, like is intimidating, <laughs> an intimidating look. You know, yeah, you want to stare down across the battlefield from that thing. Like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to sell Manticores to the people. Uh, we'll move on uh, to Krim. What is the last creature you got here? Well, before I say my last creature, I'd also like to say my honorary mention was Bane of Progress. Oh my god. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Krim, worse. Yeah, the mono green me that just blows up enchantments and artifacts all day long. But, uh, which would be really good with your commander, because you could just because it gets pretty big in Commander real quick. It's our uh, yeah. But I actually put Fallen Shinobi. Uh, I, I love Fallen Shinobi. I think it's got to be one of the coolest ninjas. And you know what, Richard? I will have my one millionth printed zombie because it's a ninja <laughs> zombie. All right? <laughs> so I, I just I want more for ninjas specifically. Like, obviously, if this were the Commander, it would kind of have, like, the ninjutsu for commander well, thing well, first what does it do <clears throat> what does the card do so for those that don't know fallen shinobi uh it can it's a five mana uh, uh like five four zombie right and then when it connects it deals it uh when it connects you get to cast uh the two cards off the top of whoever you hit uh the, the cards off the that player's library for free and so uh and then it has ninjutsu for four obviously that's where we want it and I think I just want more ninja stuff, and maybe we'll get more uh, when when we get Neon Dynasty. But for right now, there isn't a ton of stuff for like for ninjas, right? Because you only have Eureka, and like, come on, that that plays the same almost every time, right? Card's busted. <clears throat> oh, it's it's very busted. It's very busted. But like, it plays the same too because you're just gonna stack your deck, right, and whatnot. But this is like I could get really bad cards off the top of your deck, right? This is. Kind of just really random. And I, I do enjoy that because then it means that my play experience isn't the same. You still get more ninja support. I mean, I'd actually love to see Grixis ninjas, obviously. Uh, so, <laughs> like, if they if they decide to make something like Fallen Shinobi and add red into it, perfect. But, yeah, I, I just want more for ninjas in Commander that just isn't Eureka. I my only concern, I, uh, I love ninjas, but I really hate how they get around the command tags, right? Doesn't ninjutsu, that's <laughs> what makes them so absolutely insanely busted. So I'm afraid printing a bunch of legends with that, well, they're going to be incredibly powerful. Like, you almost need to change the rules so command tags applies to ninjutsu, commander ninjutsu or something. The, the only thing, though, is like, or you just make the ninjutsu, like, because Yuriko's 12 two mana. mana. <laughs> Eureka's Eureka's two, right? That that yeah. is yeah. very cheap. So but I mean like, Fallen Shinobi for four repeatedly, like do it, steal well, your opponent's stuff, it dies, do it for four again the next turn, it dies, do it for four, pick up your Vencer, bounce their land, do it again, it dies. How how, yeah. how many times is this gonna die though? I, I feel just like, feel like uh, <clears throat> anytime we've seen commanders that cheat on the command tax, it usually ends badly. Like Davriel and Eureka and Golos. <laughs> Galta. Well, Golos Galta. is it would, it Like would anything that cheats on that is... Uh, it would be nice playing if you could, didn't have to. But I think the effect would is Would Fallen like, Shinobi be that broken? Yeah, I don't think I don't, so. I don't think it would be. Even at the cost that it's at. Yeah. And no commander tax. I don't think that's actually broken. You would have to run. I just stuff imagine to like uh, control the top. You of get your to the like. Library. I just feel like you get to the late game and there's a wrath and everyone else's commanders like fourteen mana and you're like, oh, fire up my blink moth nexus, steal your best cards, and everyone's like, oh, come on, man, why is that four mana still <laughs> like? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it'll be broken, but I do worry about it being always being four mana. I would I, I love ninjas. Ninjutsu is one of my favorite Me mechanics of all time. Um and I I'm kind of sad that like we only have Eureka. We have there's a mono blue one that's also yeah, really but... cool, but it's mono blue, so it's so you have right. so few to work with. But uh, yeah, I would I would hundred percent love to play Fallen Shinobi over Eureka because Eureka is just like what am I it's gonna do? Same. I'm never I would have to bring it. To, I, w I could only play it at CDH tables, honestly. Like you could only play it at CDH tables. You can't play it outside of that because it's too it's too strong. It kills too quickly and it's too consistent because it's just two mana. You just keep revealing. I, I think it's just boring. Yeah, 
So how many times yeah. am I gonna reveal temporal trespass? Oh, I killed you. <laughs> <laughs> Draco. Pressure Cruz. On, yeah, Draco. yeah, Draco. I, got him. Got him. But but Bone like, Shinobi yeah, like, would be way more fun. Yeah. Like I think that right. would be a way more fun ninja commander. If I had to choose between the two. I would errata Commander Ninjutsu just to fix it. I would be like and then and then and then the Fallen Shinobi, like I would just lower his ninjutsu cost to two initially or something like that. And then, you know, if he dies, then you have to pay two extra. Like, just errata. Yeah, just like, have can they not errata apply. at it? Yeah. They could. I mean, like, and that's what I hope Neon Dynasty solves. Uh, yeah. We get more ninjas. So, and we get legendary ninjas that actually work a little differently. And maybe uh, more benefits outside of just ninjutsu. Or maybe, like, example, it could be some kind of, like, ninjutsu lord effect or something. But it itself doesn't have any ninjutsu stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they just release a flood and silly amount of cool ninjutsu cards that you want to build around. So then that's also fine. I just want more for ninjas than than Yuriko because I love ninjas. If they if they don't bring back ninjas in in Neon Dynasty, it would be the biggest whiff. That's the only mechanic that I want back. I mean, I want I want Arcane back, but I know that's not actually that's not actually good, and it's not happening. Just no Bushido. Just leave Bushido alone. Soul Shift can go away as well, I guess. Uh, but what about Ninja, Moonfolk? So. Oh, Moonfolk! Of course, Moonfolk are coming back. It's, it's Kamigawa. Like, well, would they, they replace? Do they still exist? Would they replace? <laughs> I mean, Tamio exists now. Tamio exists. Oh, I guess Tamio is still around. Yeah. So. Is she? Yeah, she was on uh, Innocent. She died, right? Oh, no. Hold on. She didn't what? die. She was in War of Don't yeah. you, don't you do that to Spark, me, Chris. Yeah, she was don't in War of the Spark. Don't you do that to me. <laughs> She's in War of the Spark? Okay. Our okay. only Moonfolk Planeswalker died? Don't you do that to me, Crib? <laughs> don't you hurt me like that. <laughs> How could I say such a thing? I'm sorry. <laughs> she's going to She's going to lead tribal in kamigawa we're gonna bring true kamigawa moon folks synergies oh i should have put patron of the moon as a, oh wait no it is already legendary never mind uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever moving on uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna round it out instead of rambling uh last card for me there was a cycle of really cool i think it was con not cons and Tarek here it's fate reforge it was in cons block of these Really cool, like three colorish creatures. They're they're single color, but then they have an activated ability uh, that is two color. And I I don't think they ever sell play in standard or anything. Uh, but the, the Mardu one kind of did for a little bit. Oh but... yes, yeah, yeah. The yeah. something of the brutal horde, horde chief. I yeah, think. yeah, that one was sick. Well, this one never saw any play, and that's kind of a shame because it would be really sick as a commander. This is Shaman of the Great Hunt. This is three and a red for a 4-2 Orc Shaman creature with haste. And it says, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So boom, you got some plus one, plus one counter synergies. And then it has Ferocious, which is two and either a hybrid mana of green and blue, two of them. So two and either uh, two uh, green blues. Uh, draw a card for each creature you control with power four or greater. So this would open up Teamer plus one plus one counter synergies. And when I think plus one plus one counters, I think a lot of green. I think a lot of Simic, but mm -hmm. I don't usually think a lot of Teamer. And I think that would be pretty cool to see a plus one plus one counter deck under Teamer. And then obviously the Ferocious makes sure that it's viable because you get to draw the sweet, sweet cards. And that's that's the main point here. Is you gotta if you want an archetype to be good, it better have a commander that draws cards very well. And Shaman the Great Hunt kind of nicks that box. So team or plus one plus one counters. Yeah. I'm so happy you read the card out because I had forgotten about this card. It is a cool it. card. Yeah. I thought you were asking for the biorhythm creature. <laughs> I'm like, huh? <laughs> but yeah, like this card was really cool. Uh, when in standard, I, I, if Teamer took off, I thought this would have been part of the shell because that and like Knuckle Blade. But yeah, like mm. th this, I, I don't know why this isn't legendary. Like the, I guess you know what you probably didn't. Th this was definitely when the set was built. I think for standard, right? Like to see play and construct it. You don't want to just see one of these, right? You probably want to have multiples or something like that. So, I, c I could understand why it's not legendary, but it I should be. I could see it being good, like hypothetically good in standard or whatever, where you would want more four mana, four twos with haste at the very least to grow. Uh, I bigger. feel like, but wasn't that Siege Rhino standard? 
So yeah. it was just like smashing into Siege Rhino over yep. and over Doesn't and never Siege could Rhino really have do like anything. Siege Rhino five toughness too? Yeah, so it was like, like a four right, or five. Right, so right, it just well. like smashed into Rhino. But <laughs> I, I think this would be a really sweet commander though because I like the color shifting aspect. As you said, plus one, plus one counters are a really popular theme. But this is a very different color combination that we haven't really seen before. And then the card draw gives it kind of like a baseline of playability. I think it'd be a pretty popular commander. Like, and it does something that's different for teamer. We got a lot of like teamer spell slinging type commanders running around these days, elementals. But this would be something pretty new for the color combination. Well, sweet. Uh, well, um, we all covered four commanders each. Uh, all of these are creatures that we wish were commanders. And now we want to hear from you folks. Uh, which cards did we not discuss that you think are worthy of being commanders and why? And also, if you like these, uh, any of the creatures that we picked, uh, tell us your best, uh, tell us the ones that you think would be the coolest to see in an actual game. And perhaps in the future, we could do a special Commander Clash uh, paper and actually play with those chosen commanders. So let us know in the comment section. Tell us, our feed uh, tell us the feedback. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And also, because I forgot at the beginning, again, oh boy, uh, hopefully this is not going to be a pattern. But if you want to support us, you can totally do that by buying Richard's couch and the play mats behind it. Couch? Wait, the couch is for sale? What? Everything, every, every, everything, everything has must a price. go. Everything that has microphone, a price. <laughs> like, that door, that the door, door out of here. <laughs> how much? How much would you charge for for the plushie, Richard? If you had to put a price, it's priceless. It's scoops. Two thousand, three thousand. No, no, no. Look, look. If you want to pay, if you want to pay ten grand for the the plans, you'll get them. All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> One I'm just white saying. bordered tarmogoy, for Richard. How about that? <laughs> How many, how many underground seas are we talking about here? <laughs> <laughs> Black Lotus for the, the Scoops plushie. Would you accept the trade? <laughs> Look, technically, the Scoops plushie is more rare than a Black Lotus. So okay. clearly, 100,000. <laughs> I, I offer you Seth's beard. Oh, oh that, my that's God. the rarest of it all. Seth will yeah. save his beard but, if you give me scoops. <laughs> I, I already have a scoop, so <laughs> leave, leave me and my beard out of Wait, where, where's your scoops? <laughs> Wait, this it's, the, uh, it's up there. Uh, Can you not, it's, it's up in the wow, corner. Wow, not the even top, in yeah. the shot? Wow. wow. The disrespect, wow. this priceless relic, and he's not even putting it in view. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe, maybe we could find a home that actually respects it a little bit better. <laughs> for for a black lotus, all right. He's just the low cost of a black lotus. So kid, let us know. Um, all right, that's it for our show, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Comment, feedback, good, 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 good. All right, we'll be back in two weeks. Bye.